All right, narrowness is a good thing. Can we just admit that in every area of life, when we see, if you underline the word narrow, we immediately think we get offended by narrow. But don't be offended by narrow. Narrow in every area of life is a beautiful, good thing. Think about any of you who become successful at anything. It's because you got really, really narrow. Right? If you become a great parent, it's because you zoned in on parenting. If you became a doctor, right? If you became a brain surgeon. You know what the thing about brain surgery is? You have to become really narrow for a while. You know, they say the more education you get, you just know a lot about a little. Right? The more you, you start out in kindergarten, you're learning everything. By the time you're doing a PhD, you've honed in. By the time you go do brain surgery, you are honing in. You're zoning, zoning, zoning into something so narrow. You're not out studying everything under the sun. You're studying a very specific thing. Because the way to fullness is through narrowness. If you want to start a business, it means you live and dream and think about that business and almost nothing else for a season of your life. You are narrow. If you want to become a great musician, you have to be narrow. You want to hone in, you have to, you have to practice as a musician 8 to 10 hours a day. Narrowness equals fullness. What Jesus does is he takes it and he says it's true about every other realm in the universe because this is the way I design the universe. If you want to become successful in business, you have to learn the markets. You have to zone in, you have to study. You can't just flippantly go through life and study everything under the sun. Narrow leads to fullness. What Jesus says, he extends it out to the spiritual realm. And he says, the way I've designed the universe is that narrow equals fullness. And it's true about the most important question in the universe. It's true about what is your connection with God actually look like? I'm extending it out not only from the business realm and the music realm and the art realm. I'm extending it out to the spiritual realm. And I'm saying narrowness is what's going to actually let your soul prosper. And this is not bigoted, all right? When people say, I can't believe Jesus would come and say the way is narrow. He's such a bigot. He's so judgmental. I can't believe... That's, it's not necessarily true. And the reason is, is because when I sit with people, we have to understand, the minute we say that someone's bigoted or becomes a bigot because they're narrow and it means that they're judgmental, we actually contradict ourselves. Because when we start, when I start hanging out, I remember when I would go talk to my friends about Jesus when I became a Christian, 17, 18, I would go talk to them. I would go and I'd say, Jesus says he's the only way. And they would say, you're such a bigot. You shouldn't project your religious ideas on other people. You shouldn't evangelize other people. You shouldn't, you know, tell everybody what you believe about religion. Just let everybody believe what they want to believe. And in that moment, they're actually contradicting themselves. Because the moment you say you can't tell other people what your view on religion is, you are telling me your view on religion. And the minute you say you're not allowed to evangelize and influence other people, you're evangelizing me, trying to influence me. Toward what? Toward your religious view that all religions are true and we should never evangelize anybody. And so the reality is, is we all have to come to realize that we're all doing it all the time. The question is, what is true? It's not bigoted to go after what is true. If we study math, you know, C.S. Lewis talked about this years ago. He said, you know, when you're looking at mathematics, 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's what you're pining after. You're trying to figure out, what does 2 plus 2 equal? You don't get offended by it. Right? Like, you're not in math class, and the teacher goes, what's two by two? Four. Oh, my God. Can't believe you believe things that are so narrow. I'm offended by you. Can't it be five? No! But we don't debate that. But it's just true about every other area of life. Not just mathematics, but spirituality. In the spiritual realm, Jesus says, it's like math, man. It's not jazz. It's math. There is truth, and we're supposed to go after truth, and there's untruth, and we're supposed to sift through and try to figure it out. It's not about being offended. It's about finding the right answer. That's why he says, here's the right answer. I want to give it to you clear. There's a narrow gate. 